Divine Truth Interviews. Jesus, Mary and others are interviewed by members of the media and the public. This is the third part of the interview, Identity and Self-Belief, where Jesus and Mary are visited and interviewed by Vice Journalist and Editor Julian Morgans about their identity and self-belief. But brief discussions of topics such as honesty, emotions, courage, life, self-knowledge, self-confidence and death are also included. The interview was recorded on 22nd of September 2017 from 1.10 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. I know we touched on this before, but, but something I, was, that I want to go back to is, is this idea that maybe spreading, spreading this, this knowledge, this information would be easier if you didn't say you were Jesus and if you didn't say you were Mary. I'm sure you could come up with a believable alibi. Uh, for for the just the sake of I don't know <laughs> some kind of rational there's a, there's a good rational reason there's a, you save yourself a lot of time trouble yeah Mary's talked to me about <laughs> this yeah. a lot trust me <laughs> when when we first met I was like look even if it is true just shut up about it and people listen more and it's so good what you're talking about mm. just don't say this whole thing um, but then over time I've come to see how crucial it is actually to be open and transparent with people. And you maybe want to speak more about it, but... but um, I'm interested to hear your take on it. Yep. If you were originally a critic, what turned you around? Um, well, number one, the idea of ethics and love. Like, if, if I approach you and I'm not fully transparent about who I am, where I'm coming from, why I believe what I believe, mm. um, then then I'm not being real with you and that's we can't have a, a real relationship if there's if I'm being false with you so I can't actually connect to you mm. in a, in an honest relationship and you can't connect to me so that's a big problem uh, for me uh, also I you know I came to see that it's not right to have these feelings about us and be publicly teaching something mm. uh, and then for people to find out later that this is what we know about ourselves like you could easily feel very tricked in that way like oh they've hooked me in with this like talk about all this stuff and now i find out mm. that they reckon they're jesus and mary magdalene and mm. what's the th what else aren't they telling me what's the subtext here you know what what what's their underlying motive why did they hold that back do they want to start a call this way being completely upfront, it just seems like people can make their own decisions about us based on the most knowledge like to me it feels like it's in any relationship that you have with anyone you enable the other person's choice more if they have more information mm. about you so mm. if if that's loving and this is a loving principle that i was resistive to initially but you're very passionate about um but i see it now very clearly it's like and you often use this example don't you about um if a husband cheats on his wife and he doesn't tell her, so this is just the concept of disclosure, I mean, mm. um, he doesn't tell her the truth about that because he doesn't want to hurt her. The truth is he's already hurt the relationship by doing the cheating and by not telling her, he's not giving her all the information mm. that would might maybe change her choices in her life. She might make a different choice. So he's actually inhibiting her ability to make good choices for herself by not being transparent in the relationship mm. you know yeah, yeah so i think that principle applies to us being transparent about everything in our lives and as people who watch our videos know we're not just transparent about who we are we're trans like we're transparent about how we live our life the issues that we still have to deal with um what we've been going through um our our own mistakes and and all kinds of things uh, as well as our passions and uh, and what's really important to us and how much money we make. We publish that on the internet, like how much do donations we receive and how we use those donations, like our personal tax returns. We're, we're just fully transparent about everything. Mm. And that used to scare me because I was so afraid of people attacking us um, and I, I was needy to just not be attacked. <laughs> mm. But now I feel that... It, that was my fear-based idea. That's what my fears wanted me to do, to avoid fear. But in, if I had avoided all of that fear, I would have missed out on the opportunity to have 
like real relationships with other people. Sure. Now if somebody likes me or they want to spend time with me, they're fully informed about who I am and what I, what who's me, you know. Mm-hmm. Whereas if I was holding something back, I'd never feel comfortable <coughs> in that relationship. It wouldn't be kind to the other person. And also um, I don't believe that you can ever have a satisfying relationship when there's when there's the desire to hold something back. It doesn't mean I disclose everything to everyone I ever meet, but if I'm willing to be open and I have a spirit of openness about me, then you can form a real emotional connection. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think there's a level of pragmatism about what you decide to disclose and not disclose. I mean, <clears throat> I, I agree. It's absolutely best if you're just 100% honest. Uh, but you know, having said that, there, are, yeah, everyone, I'm sure everyone has thoughts or ideas or things in their past where they're like, yeah, I don't need to say that. Just leave that where it is. Yeah, so, I don't, so how do you draw the line? <laughs> I don't draw the line. Um, so my, all of what Mary said to me is secondary reasons why, to be honest. Okay. Um, for me, the primary reason is that I can't maintain a relationship with God mm. if I am dishonest. And I've no, learnt through that that every time if i ever want to be even want to be dishonest and and it's not it's very rare it, or it doesn't ever happen now but um even back in the day when i didn't want to say i was jesus right um it always interfered with my relationship with god so so what i've learned is that god basically expects complete transparency why why does god care because that's what god's like and if you want a relationship with god you've basically got to learn to be what god's what god is and so what what i've noticed is that every time what i noticed in that period of time was that every time i wasn't transparent my relationship with god was injured mm-hmm. and and partly it's also because you have a feeling of guilt internally mm-hmm. that that's there if you're not transparent so you also get to avoid guilt by just being completely transparent mm-hmm. and so so what i've learned through this process is that no if I'm going, that, so that's the first thing. My relationship with God would be harmed if if I'm not completely transparent. Mm. The second thing is I am claiming to be speaking of God's truth. Mm. If I personally cannot be truthful while I'm speaking God's truth supposedly, then I am being a hypocrite. Mm. And being a hypocrite to me is one of the worst things that you can really do with your life. And also one of the worst things that affects um, your relationships with other people and also your own feelings about yourself, like it it harms your feelings about yourself Mm -hmm. because you do know that I'm being a bit shifty here type of thing Mm -hmm. when you're being a hypocrite. And that is always at some point going to bother your conscience. And, And I like to have a completely clear conscience. So... So there's the issue of hypocrisy about truth. If if I didn't openly disclose the truth about myself or what I believe to be the truth about myself, mm. at the same time as claiming to speak the truth, how hypocritical would that be? Yeah. It would be pretty hypocritical. Yeah, it would. So, so to me, those two things um, have driven my desire to share the truth no matter what the cost. Now, at times, the cost is pretty big. Mm. Um, for me, my, me and my life, it's been very big sometimes. Um, right down to the fact that in the first century, I died because of it. And in this century, uh, in the first century, I got tortured a number of times because of it. And in this century, I've lost all my friends and, and my family and my, and my life that I had and everything else because of it. But at the end of the day, it still feels better to me. Losing all those things is still better because I still feel okay about myself and i know that god does too like feel good about me too doing that so so to me my relationship with god is more important to me than my relationship with anybody else Mm. so so to me if i if as soon as i as soon as i decide to be untruthful with my brother and sister Mm. of which you are one and the whole world is a member of that family i am basically deciding to be untruthful with God's children. And then, on the other hand, I'm trying to tell them God's truth. Now, that would be a terrible uh, mistake to make, in my opinion, 
And at times I am totally freaked out about telling the truth, to be honest. Mm. At times it's, it's getting better because the more I deal with things emotionally, the less worried I am about, you know, saying the truth all the time. But in the past, I've been sometimes totally freaked out about saying it and really frightened and, and also know where it's going to go. Like a lot of times it's very predictable if you tell the truth where it's going to go. Um, but knowing all of that, I still chose to tell the truth because, I, because to me, the relationship with God and also my relationship with myself is demands that if I'm claiming to speak God's truth, I need to also tell it about myself. Yes. Mm. Do you ever do you ever miss your old life? <laughs> Not at all, actually, ironically. But if you'd asked me that like 10 or 12 years ago, I might have said something different. But um, now, no. In fact, I quite often say to Mary that our life is beautiful. It's like we get to do what we're passionate about every single day of our life. Mm. And, and so no day... We work very hard, but our, it doesn't feel like work, you know, like it, it doesn't. Uh, and we do a lot of work environmentally. We're running two companies or assisting in the running of two companies. We're, we're involved with people's lives, you know, a lot. And we do seminars and we do presentations. We travel around the world doing that. And, but it and all, we create all and this, we create all this material. Uh, we do on the average, uh, this year's a bit different, but in the normal year, we record anywhere from 150 to 400 hours of material every year that we produce. And, and as you know, the work behind the scenes doing that far exceeds the work in front of the camera. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, we, all that, and it all just feels to us like this is idyllic, yeah. idyllic life. And on top of that, amazingly, even though people don't really accept believe necessarily us. or believe who we are. And they're often challenged and confronted. Because they love what we're doing, they still donate to us enough money so that we can live and also do the, get the technology and pay the expenses yeah. to do it. Yeah. Like, how amazing is that? And mm. before, when I was working as a computer systems programmer and analyst and systems engineer, I worked like a good 100 hours a week every week, mm. um, worked like so solid time. It was very lonely being a systems engineer, as you can imagine, because you've got to do a lot of things outside yeah. of ours. And and I didn't really enjoy it that much. And while I was earning two or three times of what we currently receive in donations, um, none of it I really enjoyed. And I had a very lonely life and a very uninteresting one. I'd, I'd never travelled up until up until I started this yeah. uh, in my entire life overseas and stuff. And, uh, and so it's just a... Yeah, to me, it, 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 it's such an, um, well, it's a, it's a beautiful life and it gets more beautiful the more Mary and I deal with emotions mm. that we're still working on in order to get rid of fears that we have and other issues that we have and even stuff that we still have between each other. And the more that happens, the more beautiful it gets. Yeah. It's just so, yeah, I, I like I feel really blessed mm. in a lot of ways now. But if you had told me that, I would feel blessed in 15 years' time. Mm. 15 years ago, I would have told you you're an idiot. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Considering yeah. Of yeah. what I felt at the time, I would have to go through. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It seems to me that in many ways, this isn't the story that a lot of people expect. In many ways, what you guys hear seems to be the product of a relationship mm -hmm. that, um, uh, you know, you found one another. And it seemed to me that you've both gone through these really difficult journeys that were potentially impossible if you didn't have someone else there. I'm not sure. Well, I might say <clears throat> that for myself. You, I feel you've made some really big headway on the journey long before you met me and that has helped both of us immensely because, because I've had a lot of fear about everything and um, feeling afraid of emotion and um, and kind of there's a time lag between you going through this feeling of like I miss my old life, how's this ever going to work out? You kind of got through some of that and now I started it and you're, you're kind of an ally and as the years go past I see more and more the truth that, yeah, my life is way better than it used to be and I'm way happier even when it's tough. Um, so I feel like, oh, will I often say that to you, darling, don't I? Like, um, 
without your love and without your patience and without your like your willingness to go you're allowed to do whatever you want i'm not going to put emotional demands on you you have to sort it out and and i'm not going to make you feel guilty or i'm not going to will manipulate you in any way mm. that's helped me so much you know and i don't know what kind of progress i would have made if it was just me on my own mm. uh, in terms of getting real emotionally getting real about you know what i really wanted because when we first met what i wanted was um you know to travel and have a career and and sort of be in control of everything <laughs> um and and to never have anybody think dislike you <laughs> never have anyone dislike me. and i harbored all these kind of deep-seated feelings about like a longing for god and, and a fascination with god and um that was never expressed and how huge areas of my whole nature was not expressed because i was so afraid of displeasing other people and without you already kind of embracing some of our nature before i met you because I found that so appealing, you know. I found it so appealing that this guy who I pretty much am so challenged by and sometimes I really want to hate him mm. uh, because I'm so scared and because I would like to have some of what he's offering but not this whole package, you know, not this whole identity thing. And I don't really want to face if that's true about myself or not, you know. Um, without you sort of embracing our nature and our love for God and this passion and just being driven in that, I don't know where I'd be. Like mm. that helped me so much to embrace my own self a lot more because mm. I wasn't the only one in the world who had those. I felt like before then you were alone. I was yeah. alone. Yeah. And then and I never <clears throat> expressed it. And then I met someone who was expressing it, and I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, yeah. that's so appealing and attractive. And it's in a lot of ways given me so much courage to be myself more. Mm. Mm. For me, it's probably a bit different, Julian, because a lot of my voyage has been alone. Yeah. So, yeah. and when I say alone, I went through a period where I did feel completely alone. Um, and after I after I reconnected with my relationship with God, because there, there was a period of time where I felt quite um, sort of anti my relationship with God, I suppose, in the sense that I felt it had brought me trouble, and uh, in my life, so. And once I got through those emotions and I reconnected again with my relationship with God, after that I didn't feel alone anymore. And so even though I was alone, I didn't feel alone. Does that make sense? Like physically alone, but I don't feel alone anymore. So nowadays, even when Mary um, has sometimes a feeling like, oh, I've had enough of this, it's all too hard, and look what they're doing to us, and look what they're doing to us, and feeling like challenged by what people are trying, you know, people are trying to do. Or challenged by the intensity of my by, own emotion. Yeah, really, either way of, of those things. And um, I sort of sort of feel like, well, darling, you're allowed to do what you are you want to do. And if you don't want to be have this life because, like, like, see, for me, it's like I love Mary, I love God. To me, it's just simple. Um, I want Mary, I want God, and I'll do whatever needs to be done. <laughs> To, to, have to have those things. Yeah. Um, but for Mary, it's a, because of some of the emotions she carries from her family, her feelings are, yes, I want God and I want him, but I also want to feel safe. Yeah. Whereas I'm okay feeling completely unsafe. When I say I'm okay, I'm still scared sometimes, but um, to me it's not as important as my relationship with Mary and my relationship mm. with God. Whereas for Mary, sometimes the fear is more important yeah. than the relationships. And that's and why I feel like we have like an incredible relationship in, compare, in comparison to the relationships I've had in the past. Like we're honest, we're, we're, we know each other really well, but we're not always in this state of blissful togetherness really because, yeah. you know, you, to be to, in a real state of togetherness, you have to have a, a kind of resonance of emotions. Uh, don't and you, you and you have yeah, to learn and, i feel to not pro project at the other person that they your have fears to, yes. you know your fears are your fears your your grief is your grief your yeah. shame is your shame and as soon as you 
try to get the other person to go along with it. Now you're starting to be manipulative, in my opinion. And, and even though you're trying to feel more together, you're actually creating a division between yeah. the two of you because yeah. there's a pressure on the other. And so that's a big, that's been a big issue and, and that's still stuff that I'm working through. Of, of And also we were brought up very differently. I, yeah. I was brought up almost like I could spend the whole day alone and nobody would know that I had. Mm. Um, I often went out riding my push bike around looking at nature, you know, for whole days at a time when I was six years old. Nobody knew where I was. Nobody would have been able to find me if something happened to me. And, but I always come home, and, and, but nobody really knew what I'd done. <laughs> and, and I've lived a lot of my childhood that way. So I was allowed to have my own life mm. from a very, very young age. And... Um, now, while that might sound lonely to some, it was also quite good for me because it meant that I could choose to do what I wanted to do and yeah. I loved doing what I wanted to do and I, nobody ever pushed me into doing something I didn't want to do and it was, it was so good like that, you know. Mary's had almost the opposite to that. So she was brought up in a way that she had to be involved in everything, everything. the family was doing. She, she was forced into being involved in everything the family was doing and... And, and quite often she wanted to avoid it by w reading a book or something like that to get away from all of that feeling that she was totally I've controlled. Read my reading skills were very well advanced <laughs> because books was my only escape, you oh, know. Your, your yes, that was my right. place. I went. Yeah, because emotionally there were so many demands upon you to yes. share in the family's structure and well-being. And they're, they're undealt with you know stuff that that they have yeah um and so there's all this pressure and so i became very sensitive to other people's emotions you know yeah. and, and it was very hard in our relationship initially i said mary you've got to stop worrying about what i feel mm. you know because it's only worry it's not it, oftentimes it's not even what i feel that yeah. you're you're just worried that yeah. i might feel it yeah. yeah you've got to you've got to feel your feelings first and work out what they are and then tell me what they are and let me respond to that based on what i feel from that and this is something i was allowed to do but mary was never allowed to do so that that has created yeah uh, so difficulties for you hasn't it yeah. in a lot of ways because it, it and also so much fear of having an experience um of my own like in like going ahead with my emotion before seeking reassurance that it's okay with everyone in my environment that mm. i feel sad now or i feel happy now or i feel excited now or whatever so that's been a huge problem for us hasn't mm. it just me working through that and i yeah. see it very clearly now but it doesn't mean it's not always acting yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but so in that regard i'm allowed like i've always felt like i'm allowed to do what I do type of thing and allowed to be myself even though nobody really likes me very much. You know, that, that's how it was in my childhood. Mm. And I, I've always had a, a, a desire for truth as well in my childhood, which meant that very few people liked that. So mm. so that, that was difficult uh, growing up in that kind of environment. And I was also a very sickly child uh, because I had all these emotions I hadn't dealt with. And, and so, you know, it was only after I dealt with all these emotions that I stopped getting sick and, and when, everything. When, when you say you had a desire for truth as a child, what do you mean? You used to tell people they were fat and, you know, just put it out there? Um, I was never unkind. Yeah. But if somebody asked me I would, and they'd say, so am I fat? I'd say, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any particular memories of getting yourself into hot water by being brutally honest frequently when neighbors ask me about our family or our or, or neighbors ask me about other families in the street where um and i would just innocently say what the truth was so and, like and, what, where are your parents now or something like that you mean or yeah, they're or having what, an argument or, yeah, or yeah what are they something. doing or whatever yeah. is going on i would just say what's going on do you know what i mean it's like uh, and frequently <laughs> you know they didn't want people to know that obviously and uh do you remember a particular time? Um, there were quite a lot of times where uh, women in particular, uh, adult women in particular, would come to our house in a screaming rage at my mother talking about how I told somebody about something. Like what? What do you uh, mean? That I knew. And yeah, well, this is pretty I interesting. I don't want to say all of the occasions, but sure. it, was, um, it was difficult because... I would be sitting there terrified of this rage coming out of these women. <laughs> um, 
but I'm also totally confused because I told the truth and I didn't ever understand why somebody wouldn't want to hear it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And as Mary knows, I have almost like a, uh, a naive innocence about truth, to be mm -hmm. frank. Yes. Um, where, where it feels to me, well, it doesn't worry me <laughs> um, so much if I have to tell the truth. This is why it bothered me a lot once the Jesus thing came up because I knew I'd have to tell the truth about that as well. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, if someone said, oh, did that guy do that? You know, like at school, you know, oh, I did such and such go and steal this. Yeah, yeah, he did that. <laughs> you know, like, and of course, you know, the guy who stole that yeah. thing, obviously, he would be pretty angry. angry about the fact that you said it and, I'd, you know, call you a number of names and so forth. You know? <laughs> and sometimes do worse. I had a few kids sometimes wait for me after school to beat me up because of those kind of issues. So, so frequently, the this sort of naivety I sort of have about truth sort of got me into a lot of trouble. Yeah. Um, but I still, after it got me into trouble, I was still confused <laughs> about why. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I've always had that feeling of confusion about why doesn't anybody want to know what the truth is. Sure. Tell me about the last time you said that, um, you know, you've felt comfortable with this truth as difficult as, as it is for a while now. Mm -hmm. um, do you, can you remember the last specific moment that you really thought, no, nah, I need to go give this up or I need to get around this, I need to stop this? Um, it was probably way before I met Mary. Is um, that when you, um, was, oh, do you remember? Uh, you told me once, or George told me once about a time. Was yeah, that, that would be the yeah. last time. It was, I had a friend in Barbados who um, he'd heard, that I was saying I was Jesus, and eventually we developed a friendship. And I've visited him a number of times. He's still still alive in Barbados, and um, and um, so he contacted you via the internet or something. Yeah, yeah, and we uh, we visit each other quite frequently actually, because I get to go overseas uh, quite frequently. So usually I have a stop off there mm. to say hello to my friend George and and his son David, who is about a real friend. David yeah, yeah. Uh, Raisman, his name is, and um. Yeah, so so we um, so it was during a time just one year after um, I'd start. I started to say to people on the uh, on you know in my life that I, I was Jesus, right? So this was this was just after two thousand and four. Mm. And you, it was, it was, that's how you met George, wasn't it? It was on a forum. Yeah, about, yeah. Um, but what happened is the matters. forum got very, very violent and abusive, and. Um, they all, all the forum managers got together and decided to have meetings about me. And, uh, and they all decided that, um, uh, that they would remove me from the forum. Okay. Right? And, uh, and, and then on top of that, uh, what happened was um, in the process of the decision, half of the forum the moderators disagreed with the decision. So now there was a fission in the organisation, and, wow. they, and they got and they started really attacking each other. Like it was a great big nightmare for them, I suppose. But for me, all it was is I just said the truth because I was asked for it. Like, but uh, and I said it on the forum. But um, and it was about the fact that we were there. You know, there was Mary and I returned, and along with some others too who have returned, which I don't want to disclose because they don't want their names to be disclosed at this point. But um, but I, I uh, basically said all that and, and the forum got pretty heated and I got expelled from the forum. And it, it was it was pretty early in the times of me just saying, you know, who I was sort of thing. And I just went into a real big downer about, wow, yeah, this is an illustration of how pointless this whole <laughs> thing is. Do you, you know what I mean? Mm. And, and I really got uh, quite what I would call negative about the truth of it all. And, and you were pretty hard on yourself and I, as and well. I, right? And I didn't sort of doubt who I was so much as doubt whether there was any point to it, yeah, I suppose. There was no point in, in being honest. No, there was no point in being honest about who I was. There was no point in sharing the truth that I knew with others. And the, the, it, it, I got quite, well, I suppose I would classify it now as a bit of a tantrum, really. Um, in that I thought, well, no, you're, God's expecting me to be truthful. Damn this, I, I, I don't, you know, this is just a waste of time. What's the point? Mm -hmm. You know, like, and, and so I got into this state, which, which I sort of 
which I'd classify as a bit of an um, angry downer. You also me. were kind of like, you weren't questioning, from what I remember from what you've told me, you weren't questioning the truth about yourself, but you were questioning your capacity to sort of see this thing through and actually yeah. be able to share this truth with people. And, 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 I, and at this stage, I still really would have liked to for it to not be true, to be honest. And mm. so... So I, I, I sort of went through a period of a few months where I just refused to engage any of it. And um, it was pretty hard to go through it because it, cause it, cause internally there's all this truth that just has to come out sometimes and, uh, and it couldn't come out through any means. Um, and, and I was denying it. So You're suppressing yourself a lot. I was suppressing lot, myself a lot. And as a result, got quite... Uh, physically sick during that period as well. Really? Yeah. And uh, when I say quite physically sick, just had a bad flu for a long period of time that yeah. wouldn't go away. And um, and as soon as I realised what it was about, the flu cleared up and and I was... Back so you sort of again. resolved, was that part of, I don't want to put words in your mouth, just from what I understand, it's part of you like really coming to realise, look, I'm not that happy about being truthful and open about this, but if I don't, well, I'm, I, I was lose... happy about being truthful and open about everything else. Yes, mm. just about, but not about who I was, because mm. it always seemed to be the point of contact where everyone went nuts yeah. uh, around me, like, and it was, and and, and, sorry, and everyone started attacking yeah. or or belittling or condescending or whatever they chose to do. But sometimes it get pretty violent. Like I've had a lot of people send me like threatening emails, letters, ring me up, phone calls, where they're going to kill me and all this kind of stuff. And and particularly during that time, it, it was quite like traumatic given that I hadn't released all my fear about it yet. Mm. So so I sort of went into this sort of like rigid uh, refusal <laughs> to do it. Yes, yes, but was it was that process, wasn't it, where you sort of really got that lesson of the personal cost to yourself and your relationship with God mm. if you suppressed it? That's you? right. Like that's yeah. what I learned through that was that the personal cost to me and my relationship with God was so great that no matter what happens to me, I decided that I couldn't do it. Um, but before then, I was in a bit of a tantrum and just rigid and just feeling like, no, stuff this. Mm. I'm just not going to do it. What is the secret to self-belief? I don't know if I know what self-belief is, um, to be frank. My feelings are that, um, and this is the feeling I have now quite strongly, is that a relationship with God tells you who you are. God knows you better than you know you, mm. being the creator of the soul that you are, of which you are one half. God knows you the best. And my, what people call self-belief, yeah. I, I, Mary knows this, this about so me, that important. I don't really have a very strong feeling of self-belief, but I have a very strong feeling. I, I, I know what God's telling me is the truth. And I am prepared to maintain the relationship with God, therefore I'm prepared to accept that truth. Now, I know that that is also not uh, completely healthy in the sense that I do need to obtain some level of self-belief mm. at some point, and I'm still working through that emotionally to do that. But at this stage, what, uh, what reinforces it all to me is, besides my memories and everything else, which I feel is, uh, which is another part of self-belief, I feel you need to know yourself. Mm -hmm. And knowing yourself is about emotionally accepting everything that's happened to you. Yes. So for you to know you, you have to emotionally accept everything that's happened to you. If you start denying emotions about what has happened to you, then you'll start not knowing yourself and you'll start being guided by underlying issues that you're rejecting yeah. mm -hmm. but that you're acting upon. Yeah. So I, I see that that's also what I understand. I need to completely emotionally accept everything that's happened to me. Yeah. And this is why I know my process isn't finished yet, because I have not completely accepted everything that's happened to me yet. And even though I've had to accept a lot of the 2,000 years of experience that I remember, I've yet to fully remember everything 
about it. Mm-hmm. And that's how I know that I'm still in emotional denial about some things. Mm. And while I remain in emotional denial about some things, I'm not going to know myself completely. I'm not going to understand myself completely. I need to get out of the state where I deny the emotional experience and allow the emotional experience, then I'll know myself completely. And yeah. that to me, that's so good that you said that because I, I didn't, if we needed to say that. To me, like, while I have an investment in denial of something within myself or about myself, then I, I'm going to want to believe things about myself that, that are false. They're false. <clears throat> they're false. Yeah, that's true. And so to me, the only way to certainty and knowledge of, who I am is to uncover and explore everything within myself. The good now, and the bad. Mm-hmm. The good and the bad. Good and the bad. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that, it's equally I, challenging good and bad. But also, yeah, th- 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 sometimes the good stresses you out so much because you know you've got to now act upon it and it's going to stress out strong, other people. Perhaps. Or like for me, like, whoa, I've just, I'm connecting now to this big desire, way bigger than I've. Ever had before. Ever had before. And it's going to lead me down it's a track. It's going to lead, like we were talking about scary. earlier, about leading God's way. Mm. Man, I want to do all this bigger thing. Mm. This is how big I feel and capable I feel, but this is yeah. how big my desire is now. Yeah. To fully experience myself, I have to follow that desire. Yeah. Mm. And um, if I try and suppress it, well, I can't be trustworthy really then to know myself, to know truth, to know anything, because I'm, I'm invested in suppressing and denying a part of myself. And mm. and then and, on the opposite side, yeah, on the bad side, anything that you feel internally is bad, it, it comes from some kind of emotional experience that you're trying to run away from usually. And they all can be released if you're prepared to have courage and feel your emotions. Mm. So you can release the bad. You, you can change. And yeah. so it's not a fixed it's position. It's not a permanent It's thing. not a permanent state. And so on the on the what you think is bad about yourself, that can all be adjusted. You can fix all of that if you decide to work through your emotion. But you, you can't fix something that you don't feel. Hmm. You have to feel it before you can fix it. And this is where I feel, you know, we're still working through that process of, of feeling everything in order to fix anything that's out of harmony with love and in order to embrace everything that is in yeah. harmony with love yeah. We need to embrace firstly what it is that's out of harmony and what it is that's in harmony. And this is where judgment is very bad for you because it's like every time you judge yourself, yeah. you you won't accept the emotion you have. Mm. And then you go down the track of acting upon emotions that almost subconsciously um, because you're not accepting them. And so I feel it's sort of a, a double, for me, it's a double thing. It's firstly getting to the stage where you accept every single tiny little emotion that you have about every single tiny thing, big or small, good or bad. Mm. The second stage for me is, right, rely on God to tell you what are what is your nature, what is your personality. Now, God's not going to tell you everything about it because that God wants you to go through a self-discovery process, mm. but you can go through the self-discovery process and in the end, you will get confirmation from God. Yeah, this is the way to go. You, you know, your desires, this is this is your passion. You can feel this. You can feel that you're really, you, you know, you're really enthusiastic about that. You can yeah. feel that. Do that. You know, and it doesn't matter how scared you are and it doesn't matter how worried you are and how ashamed even of it you are perhaps or whatever. Do it because this is where your passion is. And as long as it's in harmony with love and truth, it's always going to have in the long run the best benefit to you and to everyone around you. And to me, um, self-belief is about those two things. Mm. And and yeah. that's why I say I haven't completed it yet yeah. because those two things are yet to be completed. Uh, when I say completed, I've still got emotions inside of myself that need to be released in order for me to accept everything about my, feel- my feelings and my memories. Mm. And then on top of that, my relationship with God hasn't been established well enough yet mm for me to be at one with God, where God can tell me everything about myself. Mm. And and yeah. those two things are what we're working on to achieve Definitely. at this stage. Mm. Definitely. Mm. And I would say that my overall goal is not self-belief, but self-knowledge. Like, I want to know the truth. It's interesting that you see them as being entwined. Well, I see them as almost separate, separate actually. Okay. A belief is something, you know, you can believe whatever you, can believe you want. You can believe something that's false. 
and it's still a, it's still a belief it's still a self-belief sure that's true but yeah. if if i have a knowledge of something as truth then it's it's not just a belief it's it's if you can feel the difference between a belief and a knowledge it's it's totally different it's, uh, it's like somebody believing the earth is flat yeah there's and, no evidence so and but they can believe it with all their heart. Yeah. People yeah. email us and say, no, yeah, we've had people Jewish email us saying, look, you, you guys are this. wrong. You've got to start teaching people the Earth's flat. And I'm going, I've seen the Earth from outer space. I know it's round, right? Well, and NASA and, does <laughs> and stuff as well. Well, notwithstanding all that, I've <laughs> yeah. personally had the experience of seeing <laughs> exactly. it. So, so I know yeah. it's round. But, yeah. but the reality is that you can believe it's flat, but that doesn't help you much. Like, belief is not what helps you the most. It's, it's truth that helps you the most. Yeah. So I feel like in agreement with Mary that the truth about yourself is more important than your belief about yourself. And I understand that other people would say perhaps we've got a belief about who we are. And I'm okay with them saying that. But for me, my goal is knowledge. And I know that I'm going to find that knowledge through fully, like you just explained, full acceptance of everything within inside me yeah. and the humility to have a relationship with God who who can tell me more about myself as well. Um, and that relationship has to be based on truth. So, you know, to me, I feel like that's all that is important to me is my self-knowledge, my self-belief. You can call it self-belief if you want, and I understand that, but I don't view it as such. For me personally, there's this other aspect of self-belief, where it's just also a confidence thing. It's like oh, you were talking before about about ambition and setting up this organization. You're looking at it yeah. going, it's huge. Can I do this? Mm. For me, there's also this element of like, so I have no evidence to suggest that I can because I've never done this before. Yeah. But I, I think I can. See, I would well, call that's... that faith. Yeah. Okay. I would call that faith. Like every every person in human history who's ever made an advance in any area of knowledge has always had to have some faith that there will be an advance by them taking a certain course of action. Mm. And to me, that's not so much about self-belief, but that's more about faith in the way that anybody can do anything mm. type of faith, mm. not I can do anything. Yeah, it's but, not but a anybody can do anything. thing. And, and also I think that the more you learn about God and the way that God's laws operate, you you can have faith in that and say, well, look, if I do things in harmony with ethics, truth, love, personal humility, if, I, if I'm sincere in my endeavour, these laws are going to support what I do. And no so matter it's not how my it, self-confidence, it's confidence in the system. And no matter I'm how assisting. afraid I am, yeah. it can still be done. Mm. You know what I mean? Like that... Because there are times when both of us get quite afraid. Yeah. Um, you know, if you've got a, some violent people who are twice your size, you mm. know, angry down at you. your throat, yelling yeah. and screaming at you, about to punch you, most people under those circumstances will feel some level of fear. Who are those people? Oh, they're just people who are just angry, who are angry about what we might have said or done or angry about their we wife. We haven't encountered any recently, oh, but oh, I encountered have... a few in the past, you know, yeah, like sure. yeah. um, regarding... You know, particularly people where their wives have gotten interested in divine truth, but they are not, for example. Okay, right. Um, but, um, but what I'm saying is that um, you can still, if you still have confidence it's in God's laws yes. and God's truth and, and the truth and faith in the fact that anybody can do anything, right, then you've then got to logically apply that to you. That means you can do anything. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. it's not a self, and so I, I lack probably self-confidence, but I have some faith that if I can, it's like having the interview with you. Mm. Yeah, I'm a bit anxious, I'm a bit afraid, I don't, you know, I'm what, not overly today, but, you know, that in a general situation, talking to a journalist. Um, and But I, I do have faith that if I enter this in the most... In like with integrity myself and I be myself as much as possible and reflect honestly how I am right now, then no matter what you do with what I say, mm. I have a strong faith that God's laws will operate to assist me to grow through the process. Mm. So yeah. even if you slanderize me, which I don't, I'm not saying that you would do sure. that, but um, and, and it, if that exposes a fear in me that I let go of, then, well, goodness, I've grown. And God's law is operating to assist me to do that. 
Okay. Sometimes it might work in the reverse. I might go, wow, that was the most honest and open I've ever been in, a, in a, um, an interview. Mm. And wow, that came off really well, mm. you know. It, so it can work in either way. But I just have more faith and confidence. It's a kind of a relief to give up on self-confidence. <laughs> you know, that's a hard thing to get. It's, I think, I find in lots of ways it's a relief to give up on all sorts of things. Yeah. To just say... That's a worry that's not worth my my emotional investment. Yeah, and to yeah. just stop trying to be perfect or yeah, you know, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. I sort of feel mm. self confidence is overrated. Yeah. I suppose. Um, you know, if it was just down to me, it would be a problem. Thank goodness God exists. Like, <laughs> well, thank, even thank goodness that that the truth does exist yes. on every matter. Yeah, because the absolute truth does exist on every matter. I mean, you can have confidence at least in that. Yeah, if you don't believe in God, but. The, the, you know, the problem with self-confidence is that if you then have a belief, mm. but it just happens to be a bunch of lies, mm. that's not much good for anybody, including yourself, really. Yeah. And uh, so we're very dedicated to finding out the full truth about everything, including mm -hmm. ourselves. ourselves. Yeah. And in fact, we spend more time finding out the truth about ourselves than we do about anything else mm. at this stage, because that's where the biggest problem is. And so that's where we spend most of our time. And um, remembering God's truth about other matters is relatively easy in comparison to that because that process of finding out the truth about itself is much more emotional and requires a lot more courage emotionally yes. than just finding your truth about some external matter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do you think? I'm just playing devil's advocate here. What do you think you'd say if uh, you die one day, you get to the pearly gates and God says, sorry, Alan, you got it wrong, mate. <laughs> You're just a you're just a regular guy. Just, well, well, the, well, you the, feel like a regular guy. I already guy feel like anyway. I'm a regular guy. So, <laughs> but yeah, you know what I mean. No, yes. that would not be a That's very a much big surprise to me. In in some ways, I'd probably feel a little relieved. Um, but but there is no pearly gates, by the way. Anyway, yeah. but uh, um, you know, I know the way God works, and the way God works is this: if you have a loving intention and you speak the truth and act truthfully in every area of your life, and you want and desire with your heart to love everyone around you and the environment. And based God, on that intention. Based yeah. on that intention, that intention. Then whatever false beliefs you may have are almost, um, almost don't matter to God as much as those other things that I've just mentioned. Okay. Does that make sense? But I don't think either of us would be personally like... Um, well, we both just want to go, well, how did I get that wrong? Okay. That's Let all me I, figure that's this all I'd thing want out. To know. You know, that's all I'd want to know. And he'd say, come into my projection room, Mom. I <laughs> yeah. made a short I'll show you where it all went wrong. All the like, times you get this wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but and, that would be okay in in a sense. Yeah. You know. In in fact I'd I'd sort of view that as a really good thing, to be honest. Um in a lot of ways when I what I mean by that is that if we are wrong mm. and it can be proven that you are then I'm perfectly happy to accept yeah. any proof that we are. You wouldn't feel like you wasted any time. Oh, no, because I'll keep doing exactly what I'm doing. Mm. In, in some ways, I'd probably do it more successfully because I, I would do most people would no longer yeah. worry about who I am. We would need listen. to persist with the Jesus thing. Yeah, that's yeah. right. In yeah, some ways, oh, cool. it would probably work Take out. Take that out of the PowerPoint. Right, you know? right, yeah. <laughs> in some ways, it would probably work out better. This has right? always been the problematic slide. Yeah. Which yeah, you know, exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so for me, it's like, no, I know my intentions are good. And I know they're loving, and I know my intention is to be truthful and honest at all times. And time. to seek the truth. We always want to always seek the truth, seek both truth. of us. And so so I feel, and I know God well enough to know that God rewards that. Okay. So so no matter what mistakes I may make, they as long as they're not intentional, in other words, they're not me intentionally trying to do something wrong. Or trying to avoid something within myself in order to mm. to hold on to a belief. Or, or even intentionally trying to be manipulative or yeah. evil. Mm. Um, then anything that I do, if the intention is well-directed and loving, is going to be rewarded. And I know that God does and God's laws do reward good intention. So, so I'm very confident that whether I pass... And I'm told that I'm just a normal bloke. Hmm. And by the way, I already believe I'm just a normal bloke. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why we came here is to share with everybody that everyone's just a normal bloke or a normal woman hmm. and and that you we all have the capacity to do anything once we discover the laws and the principles involved. 
Yes. So that's one of the reasons why we came here. So if somebody told me, oh, you're just a normal bloke, I'd say, yes, I am. And I, and I actually say that every, every interview, generally, yeah. when I'm asked about myself. But if they're saying, you're not Jesus and you're, on, you're only Alan John Miller, I'm going, what do you mean only Alan John Miller? Alan John Miller is just as good as Jesus. The guy was a legend. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 and from God's perspective, I, I'm a son of God just like Jesus is a son of God if I'm not Jesus. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so what do you mean only? Well, there's a problem here. <laughs> you know, what's going on? <laughs> and I'd, I'd be wanting to know answers about that question as yeah, to why yeah. it's only um, okay, so that's really interesting. So, so you basically, it sounds to me like you see it living in accordance with your own self understanding is priority number one, and being Jesus is like some far priority. It's almost cosmetic. It's, it's, isn't that how it feels for you? Like, isn't being Julian like? You don't think every. You don't wake up every day and go, "Okay, I'm, I'm Julian." Julian. <laughs> You yeah. go, what do I want today? What so, am I going to do today? What do I... Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's, I mean, comparatively easy for me to just tell people I'm Julian. I guess that's the difference between us. Well, well, if I am Jesus, it should be comparatively easy for me to tell people I'm Jesus, right? Yeah, yeah, but as we were dis discussing before, no yeah. one likes to be disliked or no one yeah. wants to be thought of. Exactly. As exactly. A exactly. Or so. exactly. But eventually, but when, it, when, it's, when I've fully accepted my emotions hmm. and what I expect is it is going to be very be easy. easy for me to say, yeah, I'm Jesus. So what? Like and just not care what they think or just understand where they're coming from? Well, I understand where people are coming from. It makes sense to me that, like, like I know, I, I know my life in the first century and I know my life in the spirit world and I understand why some people may, um, and I know the fact that I've had a large effect in history. Um, so I understand that some people may think that I'm not the person I'm claiming to be, mm. but maybe every one of those persons might get to the pearly gates, as you mentioned, mm. and say, and be surprised to find out that actually the man you thought wasn't Jesus he actually is. Hmm. That's interesting. Let's try to answer it as sort of succinctly as possible because it's a big one. Sure. Um, I'm afraid of death sometimes. Is, mm. death, is death scary? No. That's fine. Great. No. <laughs> it's, it's like um, for the majority of people, it's like swooning or fainting. Going to sleep. Uh, going to sleep. The reality is your soul and your spirit body, you, you've, you've, there's three parts to you, your physical body, mm -hmm. your spirit body, which is created at the time of conception as well, and then the soul or your, half of the soul, which is connected to those bodies, which supply the bodies, the energy. When the soul and the spirit body leave the physical body, there's a little cord that, there's this cord that snaps um, that's an energy pathway between the body, the physical body and the spirit body. And as a result of that pathway snap, snapping, you now are in your spirit body form, mm. but your spirit body feels as a spirit to be like your physical body. So you hardly even notice any difference, to be honest. Mm. And the only pain you have in passing is any pain that might happen leading up to it. Uh, physical pain. Physical pain mm. and, and emotional pain leading up to the process of passing. Um, but, but no, there is nothing to fear with death at all. Are you afraid of the process of death or what happens after death? Um, both. both. There's no, you're not nothing after death. Mm. In other words, it, once you die, you're not, you know, you, you're not, you don't, it's not that you don't exist. You continue to exist. You With the same memories, the same, the same ideas, memories. the same feelings. You're exactly the same person, in fact, but you live in a different dimensional space. Hmm. Mathematically, you live in a different dimensional space. It still has things in it, like physical things. It still has countryside and birds and animals and houses and everything else it, there are different locations that are that are basically like the earth mm. if you like but but are in a dimensional space that's different to the earth so you can't physically see it with your physical eyes but you can with your spirit body eyes so um you you'll see everything pretty normally and but a lot depends on how what kind of a person you've been as mm -hmm. to what's going to happen after then yeah and for a lot of people on earth they've been quite evil and so they have a hard time of it initially, once they originally pass, uh, initially pass because they have a lot of difficulty, you know, facing, that facing the truth emotion. about their life on mm. Earth. So um, while we're given a lot of time on Earth to, to face ourselves and without much seeming, um, seemingly problematic in our environment, you know, there's no, there's no kind of external pressure for each person to face the truth the truth about how they are what's good in within them what's what's unloving or bad within them uh, once you pass 
the environment now starts to assist you mm. in that process. So mm. that's why some people who pass go to a place that feels quite dark and restrictive initially. And this is where theories of hell's hell come from. That's where it's originated. Yeah. But it's never a permanent state because the whole environment is designed to assist you in that process. And once you start that process, the environment gets better. Now, if you've had a... Well, you, go, you travel to new environments. You have new better. environments. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah, that's more It's correct. more accurate. And, but if you've had a life that sort of, um, you know, you've you've aspired to do good things and you you might have skipped over a bunch of stuff and uh, and things like that, but you've at least attempted to look at yourself and live kind of a, a an ethical life, you don't you end up in a sort of a reason it's not that dissimilar to Earth, but the more it, that process is still occurring for you to help you to look at those things that are within you that are not in, not particularly loving or truthful and to to experience yourself just like we were talking about and as you do that you go to new environments that are even more beautiful than the earth mm. Yeah. Mm. and some of the environments that you can go to once your attitude to love changes are so blissfully incredible that you'd never want to regress back to an older environment except to help somebody from that environment to come to the same place where you are. There's a lot of traffic helping people. Yeah. Even there's a lot of traffic on Earth helping people, yeah. and spirits who come to Earth to help people. Um, and there's a lot of traffic in between different locations in the spirit world to help people mm. as well. Mm. So, so you're never devoid of education, you know, the opportunity for education. Um, it just depends a lot on your attitude to education. Yeah. If, you, if your attitude is closed and you don't want to know, then obviously you can't be helped. But if your attitude is one that you want to know, you want to discover, you want to have it, you keep an open mind, and if you have that attitude on earth, then it's going to help you a lot in the spirit world too because it, it's the same attitude that you need to develop there. Mm. 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 Let's leave it there. I really like that. I yeah. think that's great.